Hello again, this is John Stevens and another video blog, I guess you can call it a vlog, for my uh, series, the Stevens Fishing Academy, which is really just a playlist, simple as that, in which I'm going to be providing educational videos that can help you become a better fisherman based on my experience in the water, which is spanning 30-something years now in various settings, inland lakes, rivers, streams, and of course the Great Lakes, <clears throat> with a variety of species. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today our topic is love is in the air. I mean in the water. And we're talking specifically about the benefits and the downsides of fishing a spawn. Now the spawn, for those of you who are not really you know, familiar with fishing terminology, who are perhaps just beginning in the sport, the spawn is when fish go to reproduce. Hence the title, love is in the air or in the water. Spawn fishing is not legal in all states. And even where it is legal, I will give you an advisory right to begin with. It's legal for some species, but maybe not others. You should always consult your guide you get with your fishing license for the state in question. Or, especially if you're out of state, if you're fishing in a neighboring state, make sure you check up on their rules and regulations first. But with that said, there are certain benefits to it. I want to get right into that. I define them as five benefits, chiefly that you get from spawning fishing. The first one is, in order to spawn, a fish has to be sexually mature. So what will happen is all the sexually mature fish will get together in one or two areas, and they'll all be there, because they all have that urge to reproduce. You'll have no runts, you'll have no small ones, you'll have no juvenile fish. They will, will be all adult-sized, sexually mature fish, which means they're going to be bigger. So your chances of getting a big fish are really, really good when you spawn. That's the chief advantage of fishing a spawn. Number two, uh, among these advantages that I defined as five advantages, number two would be your fisherman has a better ability to assess the qualities in size of your adult fish that are there. For example, if all the adult fish are there and you see a bunch of barely legal adult fish or a bunch of mediocre-sized adult fish, well, you know that lake doesn't have any monsters. You're going to see in really shallow water all of the adult fish in one place at one time. And you're going to see how big they are. So you get a lot of big ones and you see how big the available population is and what size potential exists in a given lake. That's the second advantage. Also, female fish. If you catch female fish at this time, they weigh more than they usually do, which is advantage number three. If you're looking for a personal best weight on a particular species of fish, you often can get it if you get a female that's laden with eggs and has not deposited its eggs yet. That can add a significant amount of weight to an already big fish. Uh, also, we have males. The males, advantage number four would be the males are on a testosterone high right here. So you can get some adult-sized bigger males that are on a testosterone level that's through the roof because they're being triggered to spawn by a certain water temperature. Their body starts reacting by producing a ton of testosterone. And it makes them testy, as the word says. You know, That's where the word comes from. They get angry. They get irritable. They're easy to provoke into a strike. And you can get some males that otherwise, in other times of the year, would not be as susceptible to being caught. Well, in this time period, they are because you can get their goat and you can get them to actually take a swipe at your bait easily. And the last advantage, advantage number five, would be that you have good shore fishing opportunities during the spawn because the fish come closer to shore. And in smaller inland lakes, they're going to be on mud flats or shorelines very close to the shore in shallow water. So if you don't have a boat, you can wade out and fish it in some areas. You can fish from shore in some areas. And the people that don't have boats that really feel that they're priced out of the market, or the, the sport rather, by the boating market, being expensive as it is, those people get a chance to actually get a quality-sized fish if they're savvy about fishing the spawn and knowing how to work that to their advantage. So those are the upsides to fishing a spawn. What are the downsides? Well, the downsides deal with a lot of issues that you might consider to be sportsmanship. Some guys who are purists say, uh, even if you catch fish in the spawn and you let them go, you're disrupting the spawn. That'd be the first downside. Number one would be you disrupt the spawn. And it's true. There's no way to say you don't. And a lot of that really has to be assessed in terms of how big is your population of your target fish in that lake? Are you really going to do damage? If you have a very fragile target population, that might be a problem. But usually your state game commission, fish commission, or 
Department of Environmental Protection or Department of Environmental Conservation, Department of Natural Resources, whatever it may be called, would put a stop on spawn fishing in those areas. That's why I said it's not always legal. If you have a fragile population of a certain fish, they may shut it down with good reason. So there's a little built-in check against harming the fish in that way, where there are populations that are at risk. Number two, downside number two, you can take some species like bass, and bass would be a great example of this, off the beds. And what happens with bass is whenever they reproduce, the male sits on the egg bed and stops other fish and crayfish and anything from coming in and eating the eggs. And they tend to protect the eggs. So if you take male bass off beds, those eggs are susceptible to being eaten by other fish, crayfish, other animals in the water, and it would reduce your population. Number three, if you catch and keep fish before they actually drop their eggs or before they actually fertilize their eggs in the case of males, you can damage your future, you know, classes of fish coming up. In some species, you can, this is especially the case in Pennsylvania with panfish, you can actually keep quite a few panfish, 50 panfish a day in most waterways. And if they didn't spawn yet, if you catch them pre-spawn, you're damaging, you know, your future classes of fish. And spawn, since it's well water temperature relevant, <clears throat> it can be different every year. It could be early, it could be late, depending on how much ice you had, how late the ice you know, receded and came out. This year, spring of 2020, it's been pretty warm. Could have an early spawn. And you could be keeping a lot of panfish that didn't get to spawn yet. It could affect your forage base in the waterway because a lot of other fish like pike, muskie, even bass, depend on those small, you know, uh, bait fish and forage fish and pan fish to survive, especially pan fish specifically. So a lot of damage can come from that. And for the mortality rate of some fish that are deeply hooked, let's say you use live bait specifically, you could have a deep hooked fish and you could be letting it go. And you may think, ah, it swam off, a little blood was coming out of the gills, what harm? Well, it could go down there and turn belly up. So those are the advantages and the downsides of the spawn. I personally spawn fish in new waterways after I understand a waterway and I've worked with it for years. I don't have a need to anymore. I already know what that waterway can produce in terms of the size quality of the adult size population fish and the number of adult fish in a waterway if I fished it for years. So what I'd recommend is if you're first starting on a waterway, spawn fish it for a year or two. Just see what you find. And once you already know what's there, well then, give it a break. Don't overfish it, don't overpressure, because if you do, you could do some of the harms that I mentioned as the downsides. This is John Stevens and the John Stevens Fishing Academy playlist. I know, I couldn't come up with a better name. But until next time, which should be about every five days here in the coronavirus lockdown, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and look forward to this, because sooner or later we're going to get let out of our houses and be allowed to fish again. Take care. Bye.